Hello, and welcome back to the Arcane Forge. My name is Josh, and today I wanted to do another Commission Corner video, where I take you through some of the artistic processes and aesthetic influences and ideas that I've had while drawing one of your characters. And I also get to talk about your character's personal backstory and what makes them interesting and why you love them, which is why today's video is absolutely fantastic. Today's commission was actually for Fish, the guy who does the music for all of my videos. Now, some of you have mentioned that you like to relax, some of you fall asleep and so on while listening to my videos, which is really, really heartwarming. But you have mentioned that although you like the music that Fish has created in the past, it's maybe a little bit too stimulating, a little bit less relaxing than you were hoping for. So I took these ideas to Fish and he proposed writing some new music in exchange for drawing his new D&D character, which I absolutely love the idea of. So why don't we get started with today's video and I can talk about Fish's character and you guys can hear some of his music. So in today's commission corner, I'm going to be covering uh, Anaphora or Anaphora. I wasn't quite sure about the pronunciation there. The creation of this wonderful little character for Fish, the guy who makes my music. And this was a bit of an artistic exchange. Last time, last time when Fish made some music for me, um, that was a kind of, I suppose, more standard. Like I commissioned him to make some music for me. And while that was really well received, um, you guys asked if I could make the music a little bit more soothing, a little bit more relaxing, a little bit more chilled out, because some of you guys mentioned that you listen to my videos to relax at the end of the day. Some of you even said that you fall asleep to these videos, which is not what I'd intended, but however you're enjoying them, I'm just glad that you are enjoying them. So I wanted to make sure that this was as enjoyable an experience as possible for you. So I went with your feedback back to Fish and asked if we could make a little bit more sort of relaxing music, a little bit more chilled out, a little less energetic. But I still wanted it to stay in keeping with the general theme of the channel, which is the idea of bringing some life and some energy to perhaps some ideas that have been kicking around since the inception of D&D in the mid 70s and breathing some life into those using some of my own sort of ideas and my own style and what that means for me is a lot of vibrancy and rather than going for the kind of like you're in a tavern everything is brown and gray and covered in a sepia filter i wanted to i really wanted to bring out the sort of energy and vibrancy that the sort of late 70s early 80s brought with it and something that really speaks to that for me is kind of uh, you know synth music and you know sort of very stereotypical I guess but that's not particularly relaxing so we had a bit more of a back and forth this time and we agreed that basically um, Fish would uh, come up with this music in their own time and then uh, in exchange rather than a sort of traditional commission I would draw their D&D character because they've become really really interested in D&D recently and have made a character that they really love um, and wanted to see them in my style kind of thing so in the end um, this music that Fish produced uh, called Wizard Wave which you can hopefully hear in the background uh, in a second I'll uh, let that play out so you can hear a little bit more of what it sounds like but I'll also leave a link to Fish's channel in my description box and hopefully a link to the video specifically where you can hear this song well it has that kind of relaxing feel to it and there's still a lot of synth stuff to it so it fits the channel very well but it's also got this kind of lo-fi synth wavy kind of chilled out feel and i think it's a really nice mix of all of the probably massively conflicting ideas that i sent to fish i'm you know i'm a big fan of music i really enjoy listening to music as you know everyone does um but i am not very proficient with music you know I don't know the first thing about producing music so I feel like what I was asking for was maybe quite difficult to kind of translate into something thankfully Fish mentioned uh, that he struggles just as much artistically and I don't know if that's true but it certainly made me feel better about my uh, demands in terms of what this music should sound like so Fish asked that I would draw anaphora or anaphora however it's pronounced in exchange for this new music that I can use uh, in the background of all of my videos. And I asked if there was a way to kind of uh, inspire the image. You know, I didn't have to use the same style, but uh, if I could inspire the image by uh, the very now very famous Lo-Fi Girl uh, on YouTube, which uh, I absolutely love the idea of. 
I like listening to lo-fi a lot. I find it very chilled out, especially while I'm working or I'm just, you know, sort of pottering around the house, cleaning and tidying. It's nice kind of chilled out. It's good at avoiding stress. So I listen to a lot of that uh, on Spotify. There's like a lo-fi girls favorites um, Spotify playlist that I listen to all the time. And the Spotify girl itself was originally um, a Studio Ghibli uh, illustration that was, uh, I understand that they kind of got in a bit of, um, it was a, a bit of an issue with copyright with that. And numerous artists uh, came forward and uh, redesigned the Lo-Fi Girl to be an original piece of art, still with a lot of this Studio Ghibli influence. So with that in mind, I decided to kind of um, keep the lo-fi girl um, posture and the same sort of atmosphere in the image, but it's definitely my own style um, using this D&D character that um, Fish came up with. Now, hopefully uh, someone in Fish's D&D group uh, actually already had produced some artwork, some beautiful artwork uh, for me to use as reference of this character. Uh, you can see in the top left hand corner, uh, sometimes throughout this image, I'm looking at references of both the Lo-Fi Girl um, and uh, of this illustration. So I have a better idea of sort of like what position and uh, what the kind of spacing of the background should be and so on. And also what colors, you know, what sort of outfit um, Anaphora might use. For those of you who are, are maybe struggling to pinpoint um, the definition of anaphora, you've heard that word before, um, but maybe, you know, it's just on the tip of your tongue, you can't quite remember what anaphora means. It's used in um, sort of everyday speech when a word is repeated in, like, say, let's say a poem or a piece of prose to hammer an idea home. But uh, Fish, like myself, actually studied linguistics in university and far more commonly uh, comes up in a linguistic context um, when talking about a device that is used regularly throughout a series of sentences that may not be necessarily the same word, but could be, I mean, like the classic example are pronouns, he, she, it, they, them, so on and so forth, uh, being used. So this could be a nod to anaphora or anaphora being um, non-binary maybe, I don't know, I don't want to put um, words in Fish's mouth here about their character, I don't know um, how things play out in Fish's campaign, but Fish knows that I also studied linguistics and I feel like uh, this might be a cheeky nod to me, um, that there's some hidden meaning in this character's name. As per usual with my commissions, I asked uh, Fish uh, just for some little bits of detail, some flavour, so I could get a feeling of who this character was before I started drawing, because sometimes their personality really needs to come through uh, in how they're positioned, how they hold themselves, their posture, and so on, uh, the things that they might be doing in a scene. You know, you don't want to do the kind of... Um, DreamWorks uh, cocky smile and an eyebrow that's on every single one of their protagonists on the front of every single poster that they do uh, if the character is actually really shy or really nervous or something along those lines. So initially Fish came back to me and said that um, Anaphora is a uh, telepath, a telekinetic, whose magic has this kind of uh, violet aura to it and is a deep gnome with very, very dark grey skin, very pale grey eyes and uh, pale grey hair, who likes to cover their body from head to toe because they are very germophobic and they don't really want to be touching anything physically, which is why they've really explored the range of uh, telekinetic and telepathic abilities. So they don't really have to be breathing on anyone, they don't really have to be touching any objects, they can always be having things levitate around them. Uh, but they're a wizard and they're really obsessed with writing in notebooks, which is a bit of a uh, dichotomy there. It's really um, almost an oxymoron. You know, it's, it's really hard to, have, you know, uh, personally as an artist, I'm sure uh, writers and things like that will agree that notebooks are an immensely personal thing um, because you can always have something on an iPad now or, um, you know, have things on your computer. But I collect notebooks. I have hundreds of them and I use them for drawing in or writing in whenever I have a spare thought, but they're always something that's like physically on my person. There's something about the smell of a book, there's something about the 
you know, feeling of a page between your fingers. So uh, this kind of like um, difference, this uh, confusing disparity between having something that they want to touch and hold and something physical uh, that's going to always be on their person, especially as a wizard, but also at the same time um, making this something that um, they don't want to touch. Apparently um, in this campaign world, and certainly I do the same sort of thing myself in my own campaign world, um, deep gnomes uh, use uh, different sorts of writing implements and writing technology to humans. Um, in Fish's campaign world, uh, gnomes traditionally use a sort of fungal writing implement, which you can see me drawing uh, this little sort of um, extruded triangle, this sort of pen-like shape, and apparently this is usually made out of a kind of fungus. And so um, while this writing implement is traditionally of gnomish descent, using spell books like this one um, is uncommon in gnomish kind but uh, Fish wanted to make sure that I knew that this character was obsessed with human culture. He actually used the phrase a weeaboo for human culture. I quite like the idea of perhaps you know humorously misrepresenting human culture um, and maybe being uh, you know sort of condescendingly explaining human culture to humans just as uh, weeaboos tend to do to actual Japanese people. Uh, <laughs> it seems like a, a funny parody. But Fish also told me that um, she's a diligent, lawful good germaphobe wizard whose personal goal is to become powerful enough at magic to never need to touch anything again, specifically using uh, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything's um, telekinetic feet to achieve half of this. Her hair and eyes are light grey, though it's hard to make out her features because of how covered up she often is. There are a lot of layers here. There's a kind of cowl, there's a hood, uh, there's this kind of like Naruto-esque face mask as well, um, which on the original drawing is kind of um, in separate different colours. That's kind of like a, a deep blue. But I quite like the idea of maybe using an, a whole body suit uh, that was this kind of one dark leather material um, that covers the majority of the body and then the rest is used to kind of dress that up, these kind of dress robes on top. So I use the same colour here on the face mask and on the uh, sort of like leather coverings on the arms to kind of uh, trick the eye into thinking that perhaps there is this whole bodysuit that this character is wearing underneath. Fish mentioned that they are a fan of long leather gloves and boots that are common in JRPGs, which is not really my style, but it's your character, so whatever you'd like. They like that look on wizardy characters. Uh, but he was struggling to uh, describe it because he said he was he was not um, very versed in visual design. I think Fish was doing a, a much better job than uh, he thought that I was getting a, a decent a decent amount of information. Her main thematic colours are grey and violet, um, although again he apologised for not knowing much about colour theory, and again, these are all cool tones. Um, the person who drew the original art uh, included some orange and some gold there, and that's great, that's all you really need um, is, you know, ideally I like a vibrant character, so I appreciate the blues and violets being included there, some muted tones, um, like some browns or some greys will often offset that. Um, and having some uh, balance of a complementary or opposite colour here, so having the kind of um, blues versus the oranges and the yellows versus the purples um, are absolutely great, so this is some great character design. Any more than three or four colours tends to just be really loud and messy. And you know, that's what happens in real life. If you're a real life adventurer, you'd be covered in a bunch of different colours. But if you're designing a character, you don't, don't really want that many things going on. You want to stick to a limited colour palette as much as possible to make someone look cohesive and a visually interesting character rather than just noise, you know? He mentioned that Anaphora enjoys the quaint artistry of thick human books and so has taken a liking to big ornate tomes of the surface world, using one as her spell book. And her focus is this violet orb, which she uses to channel all of her energy, and that's one of the reasons why all this telekinetic power is kind of uh, pink or purple. I like to use sort of pink or purple generally as my kind of like default um, arcane energy, mostly through years of playing World of Warcraft, that's just kind of what I associate arcane energy to look like and I really, really like it. You guys know that pink is my secret weapon when it comes to drawing, 
So you know I had tons and tons of fun with this lo-fi wizard wave, deep gnome wizard. I abs absolutely had tons of fun. So anyway, as I say, this was an exchange. Um, so for the rest of the video, I think I'm just going to uh, let the music play out so you can hear the song that Fish created as part of this exchange. Uh, and I'll make sure to leave a link down below where you can find more of Fish's music and uh, this song in particular, if you want to listen to it, uh, without me talking over the top of it. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I look forward to speaking to you next Monday where I return for another Monster Monday. So thank you so much for joining me guys. Until next time, happy monster hunting and enjoy the music.